ultimately, we always see the market as 50-50. Half of the market is really a lot of smoke and mirrors. And unfortunately, they give the whole industry a bad name. And I want a good show, damn it. Great freaking show. You went awesome, yeah. I'm excited <laughs> to talk to you, Angie. Thank you for Yes. Me. everyone and welcome to another episode of the ecom show as usual i am your host andrew maff and today i'm joined by the amazing doug smith who is the ceo and co-founder over at true nutrition doug how you doing buddy ready for a good show i am i appreciate the uh the intro and great to uh <laughs> do this yeah i'm i'm super excited to have you on the show nutrition is a crazy space it's always very interesting to talk about different brands and how they're doing what they're doing um so i do obviously want to get into that but I always like to start off with kind of that stereotypical approach and just kind of let you tell us a little bit about your background, you know, where you've been, where you start, uh, where you got started with True Nutrition. We'll take it from there. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I guess the story goes um, in the early 2000s when uh, Amazon only sold books and everybody was crazy to put their credit card online. Um, we started a company <laughs> called uh, TrueProtein.com. And uh, the story goes, I literally, I was just out of college. I was completely broke, um, but I had this idea. So I wrote this business plan, um, which is funny. It's hanging on my wall right now, 22 years later. Um, and I borrowed uh, $29 from my cousin on his credit card to buy the URL, trueprotein.com. And, uh, you know, you're young. I was in my early 20s, and uh, I basically begged, borrow, and stole to get it started. So essentially, you know, I... Uh, um, you know, ultimately didn't have any money, but I found two brothers on Craigslist to build a website and they quoted me $2,600, which I laugh at, you know, you spend more than that in a day now. <laughs> um, yeah. and they basically told him like, well, I'm not going to give you 2,600. I'm going to give you, you know, 5,200 and I can't pay you for six months. And they were like, okay, sounds like a good deal. And then same thing with vendors buying like raw materials. It was like, well, what's your truckload price? And they're like, well, it's this. I'm like, okay. Well, I only need a pallet of it and I'm going to need you to give me net 90 terms. And, you know, 90% of the time people laughed at me or hung up on me, but yeah. I was pretty persistent, had nothing to lose. And uh, eventually I think people were just annoyed and they were like, that's fine. Just give me the address. We'll send you a pallet, you know, and that's essentially how we started. And the rest is kind of history, how it's, you know, traversed and done different things over the years. Yeah. So what made you get into this space? Um, I think for myself, first and foremost, like, you know, I was a normal kid, an active kid. I wasn't necessarily like big into sports or, or anything like that. But I think my freshman year of Penn State, um, let's just say I put on the, uh, the freshman 15 times two. And I realized <laughs> like, oh, you diet does matter and you need to be active and not just, you know, partying with your friends. And, you know, the very friends that I was getting trouble in and drinking too much and partying, um, they introduced me to the gym. And, um, that was my new drug. I, I fell in love with it right away. Like I felt so good. Um, and basically changed my major from business management to kinesiology. And I was just really interested in the human body and biology and whatnot. So essentially coming out of college, I was, uh, I guess, quote unquote, a meathead. You know, I was the guy that had the five pound jug of protein on top of my garage. <laughs> um, and you know, nice. essentially I, I was a protein user and, I didn't, you know, I started to get really intricate with like ingredients and I noticed all these ingredients that I didn't like in my product, but I didn't have a choice. So the reality is like I had to, um, I, I wanted to create something where I could just, you know, get the protein and just the flavoring, just the sweetener, not all these other additives and whatnot. So that's where the idea of, you know, trueprotein.com, now truenutrition.com um, came about. Um, it was essentially just to 
you know, it was selfishness at first. And, you know, along the way of that whole thing, I found my business partner who I knew, who I found online and like a message, you know, a message board. And um, he was kind of famous in the bodybuilding industry and, and the fitness industry. And, you know, we met and we had lunch and four or five hours later, um, we were business partners. And that's kind of how we started. Wow. <laughs> so you jumped right into it after pretty much a quick conversation. Yeah. You know, it was one of those things where it was like, Hey, we're on our path here. And, um, I remember I had like a, an epiphonic moment, you know, I was selling car wash chemicals, funny enough. And I remember I was just like, I don't, I don't know if this is right, but I remember like driving down the road and I was going to like one of our clients, a car wash. And I remember I called my boss. It was kind of an out of body experience. I picked up the phone. I was like, Hey, I got to give him two weeks. And he's like shocked. He's like, why? And I'm like, I just can't do this anymore. And I remember while I'm talking to him and he basically was like, okay, that's fine. You know, we'll have to get your stuff. I'm calling him on the phone that was given to me and the car that they provided to me. And I remember I drove home and I went, and this is when we had floppy disks and, you know, physical (laughs) resumes. Throwback. I tore up my resume and I remember destroying the floppy disk. And I was like, I can't work for anybody ever again. I have to at least try this. Um, and that's, yeah. So it was kind of uh, that moment, you know? Wow. So one of the things I'm super curious about, so the nutrition space is very interesting in the nutrition space for fitness gym type nutrition, like, you know, your pre-workouts, post-workouts, protein, et cetera, is a whole nother beast as well, just yeah. because it tends to, at least in my opinion, from what I've seen, cause we've worked with a lot of these types of brands and they, it's kind of like a trend more or less. Like some of them, they just have cool packaging and they're like, Oh, you got to use this. And then like a year later they change the packaging and now they're just a different brand. Yeah. Yours. That's obviously not the case. You've been around forever. Yeah. What, what do you see as kind of the true differentiator from your brand, true nutrition versus these guys that are just kind of hopping on like cool graphics? Yeah, ultimately, <laughs> we always see the market as 50-50. Um, half of the market is really a lot of smoke and mirrors. And unfortunately, they give the whole industry a bad name, you know, to dietary supplements. Yeah. They're really like snake oil. You have half of it where it's people that the ethos isn't about helping people or, you know, somebody wants to jump higher or get bigger in the gym or, or warding off some type of disease or some health you know, crisis they're happening. It's really about making money. And the problem is when you just try to do anything just to make money, you have these pump and dump scenarios where, you know, there's a buzzy supplement. Somebody will create something that's flashy. They'll make a bunch of money for a year or two. And then they just go, you know, defunct because the FDA shuts them down or something else. And then the other half is essentially there's a lot of good companies out there. and They really do care. and They're following the rules and testing their ingredients and everything. Um, you know, we, we like those companies, even though they're like competition to the overall health of like, you know, let's at least say the Western world, which is suffering. Um, we're here to help. So I think in, you know, our company, you know, true nutrition, how it differs from, let's just say the good guys, um, is the sheer fact that everything we do is customizable. So we're kind of this weird company where, you know, you don't have to just buy, Hey, this is our product. You know, we have hundreds of different ingredients that you can mix and match in any percentage and package it any way flavor in any way, sweet in any way, because a lot of people, um, they have very specifics. They're a vegan. Well, they can't mm-hmm. have these things. Um, you know, they're gluten intolerant. They can't have these certain things. So, you know, a lot of people, um, similar to myself, there were certain things I definitely wanted, but a lot of things I didn't want. And we're kind of that weird place to allow people to do that, not just pick something off the shelf. Um, yeah. You know, the one complication with that is obviously, People are always like, wow, that's a really cool idea. I can make something specific for myself. And then they come to the website and they're like, I'm not a food scientist. So we're uh, creating like AI right now, um, as well as a bunch of other things to help people along to explain to them, hey, what your goals are, who you are. We're even looking into like blood samples, um, saliva samples, DNA, um, a lot of wearables um, to see, um, to enter this data to basically help people um, fast forward a lot of learning of what they want, yeah. but you'd be surprised. A lot of people are like, you know, I'm really sensitive to these things. I don't want this in, you know, my product. Yeah. 
No, it's really interesting because, like, I mean, I'm a user of, you know, protein pre-workouts and all that same stuff. And every time I change, it's like a whole new process of trying to figure it out because, like, sometimes those pre-workouts make you just want to die. Yeah. And so, like, I, I, it's funny that you say that because I was thinking the same thing of, like, okay, A, it sounds really cool to be able to make your own and really have an understanding of what's in the product, especially because, you know, the whole kind of like clean eating element is becoming a lot more uh, important now. And a lot of people are looking at it, I should say, of knowing exactly what is in what they're ingesting. But to your point, I'm like, I have no idea what should and shouldn't be in that type of stuff. So I know, obviously, you mentioned the AI capability is something you guys are working on and filling that out. But for where you're at currently, what's the process of kind of educating the market on how to make those types of decisions? Yeah, um, you know, ultimately, uh, you know, every product we have obviously has a description and whatnot. And we do also have some pre-made stuff, um, pre-made formulas to basically you can morph and do whatnot with. So yeah. we are helping people, you know, we have a true nutrition coach um, that is is already in place. However, we are updating it with better AI. The problem is with all these large language models, it is new. And just like you were saying with nutrition, um, there are many ways to quote unquote skin the cat. Um, when somebody goes, well, I want to lose weight. What is the diet? I'm like, well, I always will ask what's the most sustainable because people are like, well, I only like to eat fruits and vegetables. Well, I'm like, maybe you should be on a vegan diet. Um, and other people that are like, well, I don't like fruits and vegetables. I'm like, well, maybe you should be on the carnivore diet. They all in the one way or the other might obtain a certain goal you're looking for, but it's what is the most sustainable for yourself. So the reality is you have to learn a little bit about yourself. You just can't go into it being like, well, I need a protein powder. And the first question should be like, well, why do you need a protein powder? And a lot of people will know why they do. They're like, well, there's these specific reasons I heard about and whatnot. So um, yeah, we have things in place now to help people, but ultimately, you know, because of the free reign of what we allow people to do, they can get as, you know, scientific as they want, or if they do need help, you know, even for us, like we have a whole customer service team that are on the phone all day, every day, basically helping people, asking them questions. Well, what are your goals? You know, what, are you, okay, you want to lose weight. Well, how much weight? How, what's your current diet? What's, what's your training looking like? Um, what's your work and stress life? So there's a lot of things that go into it. Nutrition is one of those things. There is not a one size fits all, unfortunately. I wish there was, but there's not. Yeah. What, um, it's very interesting. So what, what, what's been like the approach to get the business to its size? I mean, you're not a small business, you know, you're well into the eight figure size and, you know, typically for brands that are, you know, especially in the nutrition space, there's a new one every couple hours. There's probably been three since you and I started talking. Yep. So like, it's not that it, it, everyone starts them, they just house them and it is what it is. So you've obviously broken through, you've gotten to a big, a big size comparatively to everyone else. Um, what was the approach to kind of get it into the market and really start to get things moving? Yeah, our first approach, I mean, funny enough, we were on social media before it was called social media. We were on social media before there was a thing called, you know, MySpace. You know, it really was like uh, message boards, AOL chat rooms. You know, this is <laughs> 20 some odd years ago, which is funny now. But essentially, what we did was just, we showed what we had. Um, and we always from the very beginning, you know, obviously we're in business. So we're here to make a buck, too. We got to, you know, survive and eat. Yeah. But the ethos has never changed. The ethos has always been like, hey, we're here to help somebody. And help is defined in different ways. Some help is the guy just wants to get jacked in the gym. The other help is like, hey, I am have diabetes, like type 2 diabetes, and I need to lose weight. So there's a whole spectrum. So as long as the ethos is like, hey, you come at it first with helping somebody. And how you help somebody is um, obviously having information, but also having products that aren't garbage. There is a big span of good product and bad product. And the reality is from the very beginning, you know, we're big, we have a first party lab in our facility. We also have a third, we work with like six different third party labs. So everything that comes into our building, we test, we verify for purity, potency, identity. Um, and then any product that's made is obviously goes through that process again. So ultimately, you know, to have some success is ethos helps somebody first and foremost. Second, have a good product, have something good oh. you're selling. These are the, like, these are the obvious things. And I think over time, you know, instead of just trying to go, Hey, I need to sell a hundred million dollars next month, like take it one by one by one and making sure like, you know, in business, you're always getting checked on things. You're like, Oh, it's now changed. 
adjust those things to, to keep the ethos, good product, helping people. Um, yeah. And we've had that for, you know, almost 22 years now. And it's funny. Um, it's been a grind. It's always a grind. And it's super competitive and cutthroat. But I think when you have those things, all of a sudden, before you know it, you know, we were an early company where it was just two of us, you know, and now we have, a, you know, 100 different employees it just happens naturally if you keep your eye on the ball of what it is. Now, granted, you can't give away stuff for free. You can't overcharge. You have to obviously be competitive. Um, but there is space still in the industry, especially if you just have really good product. Eventually, over time, you know, if you go to like Google and, and search true protein or true nutrition, I mean, we have glowing reviews because of the ethos. Like we have good products. You know, somebody will get something, a flavor they don't like one time, but it's not a problem with the product. They're like, I just don't like chocolate coconut. <laughs> Subjective, yeah. Yeah. What about um, in the places where the product is offered? Obviously, you've got the site, customizable options, a lot of cool stuff being built out. But what about outside of that? Have you ventured into the marketplaces, retail, anywhere else that you're available? Yeah. So, you know, interesting enough, True Protein, which merged into True Nutrition, um, we have at the core of us, because of all the regulatory rules that change, you know, the FDA rules were very different in 2002, 2003. There was no rules for dietary supplements. There were like rules for food. And then there was rules for like pharmaceuticals. So we were kind of in the middle of this weirdness. So in the process of us kind of being ahead of the curve of everything, um, we actually started a contract manufacturing company. So many of the products that True Nutrition makes, obviously we make them all ourselves, um, But we also make many other products out there and many other brands. Um, oh, wow. So the funny part is a lot of the competition of True Nutrition, um, we make their products too. So in a good note, um, well, if somebody wants to buy that, I guess we're still, do it. We're still getting a part of it. Um, but because of that, it, it, it helped us create like an incubator um, of other companies. So, you know, we always explore like, hey, should we start this new brand because there's a hole in the market for it? And we've done that multiple times where we've sold off the businesses and merged them into other things. Um, so that's that's kind of how things have evolved for us, like outside of just like the brand of True Nutrition. Because the core of True Nutrition is we're not just sitting in an office and having some 3PL company, um, you know, ship products, which most su supplement companies, most supplement companies uh, don't make anything. They're just a marketing company and we make oh, yeah. the product and a 3PL that yeah. ships out the product. Um, yeah. We're everything from start to finish. You know, we're a sourcing department. Um, we source all the raw materials. We're actually doing the manufacturing. Um, and when you do that for just one company, you, you see the opportunity to be able to do that for other companies, you know, your competition yes. or other, other brands you want to start. So how does that work is for the other brands that you're obviously creating their product for? Are you, uh, is that partially you're getting, you know, a partial stake in their business as you're doing no. it, or is it just a straight, like, Hey, they're just paying you to do this. Yeah. Nine times out of 10. Um, it is usually just the relationship. They are a customer. Um, they put mm -hmm. their PO in, we make their product, we put their label on it, we send it to them. You know, most, the, un the unknown thing in the industry of just food in general. When you go to a grocery store and you see like this box of cereal and it says Kellogg's on it, they don't make it. We make it. Yeah. Um, they're contract manufacturers. Like nobody, it's very rare. I would say less than 5% of least dietary supplements that actually make their own stuff. Even the large big companies that have been around for 50 years, they don't actually make their stuff. They're really focused on business and marketing and branding. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's what we've seen. And, you know, contract manufacturers, they're everywhere. I mean, cause there's a lot of products out there. Product needs to be made. Oh, yeah. yeah. What, uh, what's the thought on what's next? You started off with protein. You've now gotten into like kind of a full suite of dietary supplements where, and I know obviously you mentioned the customization aspect of it, but is there anything else on where you're taking true nutrition? Yeah. I think with true nutrition, we're, uh, we're really progressive as it comes to like changing the dynamic of what it currently is you know the funny part is um we started e-commerce when nobody bought supplements online i think you know i look at my original business plan it was like 1.5 percent of purchase supplements um were online and the rest were with stores and mail order and whatnot and you know we kind of rode the wave of e-commerce blowing up and exploding and in a weird way now e-commerce has somewhat hesitated, if not gone down, except one company, Amazon. 
you know, Amazon or TikTok shops. That is what has made e-commerce as a whole explode. So it's been interesting to see like a lot of products now, at least with dietary supplements are sold on Amazon. Um, you know, the one issue for us is all of our products are, are custom. So it's tough yeah. to do that through, you know, a platform like Amazon. So for us, you know, we're sticking to our guns of what we're doing. You know, we're on Amazon as well because there's some products you can't customize. Like let's just say, a, you know, 500 grams of creatine monohydrate or something like that. Yeah. Um, so we do, we are on Amazon, but I think what we're, our real focus is now, our biggest hole that we've had in, you know, 20 plus years is there isn't many people that are like, ah, eh, it's just not a good idea. They love the fact that you can mix, if they're a dietary supplement user and you can mix something for your own specs, they love that. The complicated part is, hey, I'm not a food scientist or a dietary supplement scientist. How do I get this done? So we're really putting a lot of time and energy into AI, you know, and also input that you can put into our system and app and then, you know, output that comes from, like I said, you know, wearables to um, if you have, you know, 23 and me data to be able to enter that into our system to better focus wow. people into what they want and have like a, you know, a questionnaire of, well, what are your goals? Because a lot of people's goals are different. There's dietary goals change on what you're trying to do. If you're like, hey, I'm trying to run my first marathon, it's going to change your goals Then I'm just trying to lose weight. They're similar, yeah. but they're different. Yeah. What about from an operational aspect? I mean, if you're taking in all the customization of it, like it's kind of a little bit more difficult to judge what's going to get used more often. Obviously, you can you know, map out trends and stuff, but I'm, I would imagine that that's probably not easy to maintain uh, yeah. from an operational perspective. I'll say this is complicated. Um, you know, it's taking over two decades to basically everything we do internally. Like when you see our website, people are like, oh, your website's very pretty. I'm like, you're only seeing 1% of it. The 99% <laughs> is the stuff you don't see, all the databases that are working together to be like FDA compliant, you know, to then have it easily order processed. And then our actual processing you know, outside of the website component, the technology that's involved with all the equipment and machines, because when we mix something, there can't be any cross contamination between materials. And when you have hundreds of different materials, it becomes complicated. So for us, um, everything we've done, we've never had to, you know, pick some type of equipment or machinery or software off the shelf. We always have to buy something and then hack it and then beat it and change it to what our needs are. So that has been complicated, but I will say this from a scalability standpoint, um, our system that we have in place, although, you know, every month and year, it does evolve to become more efficient. It's pretty much set and it works. And it's, you know, if we were going to like 2X or 5X, it's very clear on what we'd have to do internally to do that. Um, it means bigger buildings. We just purchased a building across the street. So we are growing and expanding. Um, and every time we grow and expand, we're always like, wow, we're never going to use this. And then six months later, we're like, we're running out of stuff. Which I guess you know, problem. it's a problem, but it's a good problem. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Doug, super appreciative. I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know you're super busy. I'd love to uh, give you the opportunity here. Let everyone know they can find out more about you and, of course, more about True Nutrition. Yeah. So, I mean, on all the socials, you can find True Nutrition everywhere. Um, myself, um, I'm the Doug Smith on uh on instagram however i easy to find <laughs> I, was like, I, I go on it maybe uh once a week i'm not too socially uh i've, I've kind of for some weird reason i've grown out of it however business wise we have a whole team of people that do a ton of stuff every day so oh yeah i bet awesome doug appreciate you having me on the show everyone who tuned in of course thank you as well please make sure you do the usual rate review subscribe all that fun stuff on whichever podcast platform you prefer or head over to the ecomshow.com to check out all of our previous episodes but as usual thank you all for joining us we'll see you all next time have a good one thank you for tuning in to the ecom show head over to ecomshow.com to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform or on the blue tusker youtube channel the Ecom Show is brought to you by Blue Tusker, a full-service digital marketing company specifically for e-commerce sellers looking to accelerate their growth. Go to bluetusker.com now for more information. Make sure to tune in next week for another amazing episode of The Ecom Show.